So I gotta ask, เรื่องเล่าจากร่างกาย How and when did the idea come to you? And uh, was it hard to decide that this is going to be my first book? Because you must have had a lot of ideas. Oh yes, right. Um, uh, yes, uh, I think the first one is I have I have to learn how to trim, or just pick the topic that that can entertain the reader or uh-huh. inspire the reader. Oh. You know, because uh, when when I was a doctor, I mean, when I haven't read or learned about this. Art of telling story. Mm-hmm. We tend to think that to communicate with the public is to give a lots of information, uh. but that's not the the way you you uh, communicate with the public. You have to choose. You have to set a goal first. Mm-hmm. Do you want to uh, give a lots of information? No, that's a textbook. And to to write popular science, the goal is to uh, entertain or maybe in. Uh, inspiring or make people who are not interested in the topic mm. uh, become interested in this topic or mm. become interested in science or medicine. Okay, and and what was your first goal of your first book? Mm. I want to to inspire people mm-hmm. to feel that oh, no, biology and medicine is not something that you have to just memorize. There's uh. a there's a reason behind behind uh, all things in in nature, mm. in biology, in medicine. Mm. But if if you have you have to. View it from the lens that called uh, evolutionary evolutionary theory. Right, uh huh, and and that's what you're super good at. You can tell a story and entertain while educate people at the same time by telling them stories, not just giving them information. Yes, yes, yeah. thank you. Uh huh. Uh-huh. That's 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 the plan because when when I read the book and how to write a book, mm. uh, the po- important thing is you have to. Tell a good story, mm-hmm. uh, and, and that then, has become a theme of on on all of your books. I would say just to trace back into history and find the origin, especially a very interesting ones, and then tell tell it like you tell a story. Yes. Okay. Uh-huh. So, right. uh, to tell a story, you have to start with uh, something that, uh, like uh, like a movie, you have uh, an opening that hook the people or hook the audience to. To feel like oh I have to read, keep continuing reading, and then you build a plot and uh, start a tension or maybe some mystery things, and then you go to the climax and then conclude the story. Yeah, that's why you have to watch a lot of movies too. Yeah, I learned a lot to from teach watching. yourself. Yes. To to write. Yes, right. Oh, okay. To tell a story. Right. Cool. And I think um, the the thing I like the most about your books is that. Uh, there, there's a lot of questions in there that I never thought of asking myself. But when you start asking them, I can look at all these questions, and I would go like, "Oh yeah, why?" More important than that is that why haven't I asked myself this question before? But of course, it's something very intriguing. For example, like um, the the one that stick with me the most is um, one chapter you do. Tell us or teach us about something that is why a human baby cannot just walk right after they being born, like a lot of like newly born animals. Like we we saw the um, like giraffe or horses, like when they like came out of their mothers, they can just okay. start walking. Yeah, right yeah. Away. But but why can't we do that? Yes. Yeah, uh, I, I I love that so much. Okay. Yeah. Uh, you want me to answer? <laughs> sure, please. Uh, you know, to tell a story, you have to. I mean, uh, I, I will make it short. Okay. That the, the answer is because human evolved to have a a big brain, and it's uh, too big to pass through the through the pelvic canal. So we have to born prematurely, mm-hmm. before the brain is fully developed, and uh, the brain that has not been fully developed has a problem. To con- uh, in controlling uh, movement, so the baby has not refined their movement. Ah, okay. So it took us because of the animals doesn't need like they don't need like bigger brains than from they were born. They will just keep their brain size like that and just continue to live all their lives, right? Yes. But uh-huh. we have to grow our brain bigger, bigger. Yes. Yeah. Uh-huh. Ah, I see. And the other one that I like so much is that why a handsome man handsome and why a beautiful woman beautiful. Oh, okay. Yeah, uh-huh. it sounds very simple, and yet we 
we were never thought to find an answer to that. What I say in the book is, if you look at the nature, uh, when when animals chose who it right. want to mate, they had they have sometimes they look at the characteristic or like the outside appearance. Yeah, the appearance. And if you look at the at the an animal, you you will see that oh, we did that. We did that as a human. We did that too. Mm-hmm. And and there's a reason behind it. Yeah. Uh, basically, it's about choosing the mate that. Is healthy. To answer this question, I, I think it, it might take like 15 or 20 minutes because okay. it's like you ask uh, when when you ask something, you ask about uh, how to multiply, but you have to understand the basic how mm-hmm. to add addition mm-hmm. at first. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. So so we have to talk about our theory of, of evolution and then use that as a foundation to mm-hmm. understand a little yeah. more. So basically, it's the screening process of the nature. Yes, like right. you have to pick the best. Like specimen or best mate in order to like continue the best gene for your your like for the next generation. Ah, okay. Like actually, you can just go and uh, read all the answers from from his book. Actually, is still available in stores, and you can actually find the ebook version. Uh, ah, yeah. yes, yes. Uh-huh. Right. So, um, but the thing is, the, the the concept of trying to tell the story that is intriguing and that is so like. Super related to to us. So biology, in this case, from from what your first book showed, is not something so far away. It's not something that only exists in the textbook, but it's us. It's us as a human being. So that's why it's super intriguing and interesting. I, I guess. Yes, yeah. uh, I, I think uh, the way I, I present the information, I try to start with a question, a question that is relatable to uh, to everyone. Mm. Like like as you said, why. Mm. Uh, Human babies cannot walk right away like other animals. Mm-hmm. It sounds like a childish question, but mm-hmm. I think at one point in time, everyone has mm-hmm. this question or ask this question, but yeah. we forget when we grow up. Right. I mm-hmm. think th- there's a reason behind everything. I, I think. Yeah. And, and if you keep asking why and you keep like researching, you you find the answers. Yes, and it's not just uh, just to satisfy curiosity. This mm-hmm. answer, if you connect a dot, you will have a bigger picture about human. And it makes you understand human behavior, and sometimes it's a it it can be practical, mm. like uh, or be it can can give you a, like a serious serious uh, topics, like I think today now nowadays many people learn uh, or know about behavioral economics. Mm. Uh, it's something like that. If you connect the picture, just yeah. ask the childish yeah. question. Yeah. Sometimes it give you a big picture and under right. make you understand the behavior of. Mm-hmm. Something that yeah. more serious. It can explain like, a lot more. Like yeah, yeah in economics. <laughs> wow. Yeah, that is so cool. So uh, that was your first uh, bestsellers. Actually, all of your books are bestsellers, and uh, I, I'm so jealous of that. Uh, your first one, "เรื่องเล่าจากร่างกาย A Tale from Our Body," right? And then the next one is "A h i t ผลของธรรมชาติ The Reason of the Nature." So uh, kind of still keeping the theme. Of going back and tracing back into the origin and history to explain um, the science or the biology of humans, right? Yes, yes. Okay. I wrote it 10 years ago. <laughs> I think it, I still keep the main theme uh, using theory of evolution to understand nature. But in that book, um, I think I talk about the size of of human or, or creatures or other animals and connect things. Um, to explain that, if you look at things in nature, they have an explanation. And then uh, the third and the fourth book, you all of a sudden talk about love, but also from a science perspective. So 500 million years of love. Oh yes. Book one and two. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Uh-huh. What 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 uh, what inspired you to uh, write inspire? about love? I think um, before I wrote this book. I listen to. I think I listen to the radio uh, before. I think it's February and the Valentine is coming. Ah, okay. And I heard that someone said in the radio that love cannot be explained by science. Ah. And I and I said to myself that no, it's. I uh, disagree. Yes, uh, it's no. It there's a field that people studying. Oh my! I mean, scientists studying about love, mm-hmm. uh, about uh, behavior, hormones, and lots of things. Mm-hmm. And it's been going for a while, like. 50 or 60 years already, mm-hmm. so I decided yeah. I might I want to write a, like a small book to explain love, 
uh, yeah. by science. Yeah. But after I start writing it, it became like a brain that, ex- uh, I'm sorry, I mean, a book that explains how the brains work. Because mm-hmm. if, you ha- if you want to understand how we think, if you want to understand how human behave, you have to understand the brain. Mm-hmm. So it expands to like a mm-hmm. too big, a yeah. thick book. Yeah, two thick books, actually. Yes, two thick yeah, books. book one and book two. So love can too be explained by science. Yes. <laughs> yeah, and, and he, he did it wonderfully. So just go and read those two books. Uh, you'll love it, I promise. And then you wrote uh, another book called Song Kram. So uh, the war that can never be won. Basically, you're talking about what? Uh, about human and germs. Mm. Uh, about evolution. You may, might say that it's a, it's a war between human and germs uh, since the dawn of human. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and oh, the main theme is this. It's, it's using antibiotics. We think that we have uh, a tools or weapons, which is antibiotic, that can uh, win the war. Mm. But things going to keep evolving mm-hmm. and the germs going to fight back. Mm-hmm. That's the theme. But the whole book I talk, I, I wrote about the history of what we call germ theory, mm-hmm. how we discovered uh, uh, microbi- mi- microbes and how we learned that these microbes, these tiny creatures can cause mm-hmm. disease, yeah. which at first mm-hmm. uh, not many people believe it. Mm-hmm. How can like small creatures that we cannot see with our naked eye can cause mm-hmm. human uh, yeah. this big yeah. to, to die or mm-hmm. to ill, yeah. to become ill? Right. Again, it might sound like biology class and it might sound like a headache, but trust me, it's even more fun than watching a movie. Just go read his book. <laughs> okay. So, and, and this is like less than two years before COVID. So oh, yes, it's, yes. It's super it's, relevant too. Yes, it's, yeah. it's, uh-huh. All right. And, and your latest book, which is um, about four years ago, Pyeon Gao, Thi Hai Sap Soon. Okay, so what... What's this book about? I'm talking about it's basically it's microbiome. Microbiome is a it's a microbes that live in our body and it's benefit human body. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. So I wrote about history of. I mean, it's it's kind of opposed to the Song Kram Thi Mei Chana. The Song Kram Mei Chana. I wrote about the history of fighting germs and see germs as a bad guy and we mm-hmm. try to win the germs, mm-hmm. but. Um, เพื่อนเก่าที่หายสับสูญเพื่อนเก่าอิสมิตเพื่อนเก่า is the the microbe that used to be in the human body for like millennia since we uh, migrate from out from Africa mm-hmm. and after we kind of like learn about germ theories we try to to win the germs we try mm-hmm. to get rid of the germs we clean everything in our house with antiseptics we use a lot of antibiotics without thinking that it might cause consequences mm-hmm. and nowadays we know that Uh, these germs are important to our health. Mm. Uh-huh. And the, the consequences, it could be like many diseases that we are facing right now, like allergies, autoimmune disease, even heart disease, uh, diabetes, mm. and other many other diseases, also in, uh, including cancer. And, and what is your next book going to be about? Uh, I'm writing a book right now about genetics. Genetics. Oh, yeah, it's going okay. to be a story about how we discover about genetics and uh-huh. how it's going to change human uh, technology, human mm. future. Yeah, and I also know that you are working on another book, which could be a collection of your podcast. Oh yes, so about uh, history. Yeah, yeah. I, I haven't, I haven't started that project yet, but I'm thinking about. Uh, yeah. Uh, write a book about history. Yeah, I know because you've got lots of content piling up, and you've got like. Tons of material that you can just turn into a book, but th- that's not easy. I-, I know that it's not very easy to just turn everything into like a book. Mm-hmm.